Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chi Wang from University of Illinois in uh, Urbana Champaign. Uh, I'm very happy to present our work, another data performance approach to detecting cells in malware. And this is uh, uh, in collaboration with my colleagues from UT Dallas and uh, NEC Labs. So the malware today, they are becoming much more stealthier. This is because uh, the malware detecting techniques has greatly uh, advanced. So the attackers, they keep uh, improving their uh, techniques to uh, evade detection. One recent line of stealthy attacks, they achieve their attack goals by impersonating or abusing well-trusted programs, for example, the IE browser or Java. That is because these programs, they're often in the whitelist of, uh, uh, of an enterprise and are less guarded. Besides simple techniques, for example, renaming uh, the name of a processes, there are some stealthy techniques uh, attacker can use to achieve such purpose. Uh, as an example, there's a running IE uh, processes running on the victim host. Then the attacker can use different techniques to hide their malicious log uh, payload into the running processes. Then perform the at attack within the memory space of these running processes so that this malicious behavior will will be blended with the benign behavior of IE, and this will make the detection difficult. So there are a lot of techniques an uh, attacker can use to achieve this impersonation purpose. For example, they could do memory code injection, where you could directly inject the code into a, another running processes, for example, using DL injection or pro process hollowing. Another is script-based attack where the payload can be embedded in the, in the documents like Microsoft Word or Excel. And when you uh, open these documents, then the payload will be executed. And also, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that can be exploited by attackers to uh, do their attack. For example, there is a, a vulnerability that allows arbitrary code execution in IE. Besides this, there are various stealthy strategies that can be employed in their malware design. Uh, for example, failure techniques. That is, the attacker could uh, try to minimize the usage of the regular file system to uh, minimize their foot point uh, on the system. Another st strategy is leaving off the line. That is, in the attack, they're only using the, the tools already uh, on your system. For example, using the 30 util, which is a uh, uh, not only used in the benign purpose, but they could also be leveraged by the attacker for their malicious purpose. Here I will give an example of a, a real-world stealthy attacks. So the victim first receives a phishing email, and there's a Word document in the attachment. She opens this file. Then the embedded payload will directly uh, create a, a CMD uh, processes which further create another PowerShell uh, process. And this PowerShell process will download a script to, uh, from job, job server to the memory of th these processes and, and create another PowerShell. And this PowerShell uh, will, again, download the, uh, uh, the Empire PowerShell script, which is a backdoor, and execute that to create a uh, backdoor using PowerShell. And uh, we can see that in the whole attack processes, no file were created on the file system. And uh, the tools used in this attack is pre-installed tools on your system. So this is just one example of the attack. And, uh, and the technical reports from industrial labs have estimated that uh, in the first half of last year, uh, the CLC attacks they grew by 265 percentage and they are, they are 10 times uh, more likely to be succeeded than traditional malware. So due to the stealthiness and their attack effectiveness, it's important for us to, to detect them. However, there are several challenges uh, that uh, make it hard to detect them. As we discussed, because they are taking advantages of well-trusted programs so that they could bypass what the listing approaches is. And, uh, because the payload, they are residing in the uh, memory of the victim processes and they try to be in files. So signature-based or file-based uh, file approaches, 
uh, they are ineffective. And there are a, vi a variety of stealthy techniques that could be used to achieve their uh, impersonation uh, purpose so that solutions that target certain uh, techniques, for example, only target the DL injection, they will not work for other or new techniques. So a more general and effective approach to detect stealth mal uh, malware is needed. And, and our insight to detect this stealth malware is like this. Even though stealth malware could employ different techniques to, blend, uh, to hide their uh, techniques in the benign behavior of program, in order to uh, achieve their uh, malicious goals, they need to uh, using some system APIs or, or calling some system, uh, system calls so that they will be captured by the underlying opening system and the leaving tr traces. Uh, for, for example, for the malicious word processes, even it, uh, it, uh, it didn't create any files on the opening system, but if we do an OS level data provenance uh, tracking, tracking the processes, files, and sockets, then their malicious behavior, like creating several uh, processes, will be captured in the data provenance graphs. Then we could use OS level data provenance analysis to differentiate it between the benign process and the hijacked processes. Hence, after I will also use the malicious processes to uh, refer to these hijacked pro processes. So at this point, it seems the problem is solved. So given a target program, we could first collect a set of benign provenance graphs. Then we could use different uh, graph learning techniques to train a model which representing the benign profile of this program. Then given a new instance, uh, we, we could just using the, the pro, uh, a provenance graph of these processes and compare with the model to decide whether it's benign or malicious. However, to make this idea a practical, there are two challenges. First is that those stealthy malware, they try to incur only marginal difference uh, for, uh, for its malicious behavior. So for the graph to work, it needs to have greater deviation uh, from, uh, from benign graphs. So, uh, use, uh, so the graph, using the whole graph as a feature will not e effective in this uh, context. Another challenge is scal scalable modeling and detection. As the size of uh, provenance graphs, they grow rapidly over time. If every detection we use the whole graph, uh, that will incur a lot of uh, computer overhead. So that we propose pro-detector, uh, our approach to detect stealthy malware. Given the running processes, uh, we want to decide whether it's malicious or benign. We will first build its prominent graph. Then instead of using the whole graph as a feature to, de uh, to detect them, we will use a frequent database to get, a, to get our selection of a set of curl passes in the graph. Then for the selected passes, we will do an embedding to embed the passes into the vector space. Then we could train a uh, a null detection model to predict uh, whether a pass is malicious or not. Then, uh, using the predictions of these passes, we will make a final decision whether the process is malicious or not. The first step in this workflow is to build the prune graph, which is a uh, straightforward and well studied uh, uh, processes. So, we'll, I will present details of our uh, representation extraction stage. So this stage is to select some features from the graph that can be better used to differentiate benign and malicious processes. And uh, we propose to use causal passes uh, as feature uh, for a prominent graph. So this is, this is just as discussed. The marginal malicious passes that blended, blended in with the normal passes. So you, if we're using a whole graph as a feature, those marginal malicious passes were often re regarded as background noise and ignored by the uh, graph learning method. And how to decide uh, these malicious passes? And our intuition is that the rare passes are more likely to be uh, malicious. Uh, for example, if a um, Microsoft Word program will write some uh, 
doc files then sent by, for example, uh, the Outlook email client. This path is, is uh, frequently observed by the enterprise, so that it's less likely to be malicious. However, if uh, Microsoft Word would create a CMD processes, then for the, uh, create a PowerShell processes, this is uh, very rare passes in the observation. So this is more likely to be malicious. So we propose a realness based path selection to select the passes as features. And to define the realness of the pass, we use regularity scores to define the realness. And for a pass, which is a sequence of current uh, system events, we will define the regular score of this pass as the product of the regular, regular score of each event. And the regular score of each event is defined by the st uh, stability score of this event as an uh, auto node and an in node and, uh, and multiplied by its event frequency. And this, uh, and this score can be calculated from the frequent database we, uh, we monitor. And the, two, uh, the high level idea for this is that the less frequent system events or, and the less stable event, they are more likely uh, to be ir irregular so that they will have low regular scores. Then our problem for this is will be to finding the passes with lowest regular scores from a problem graph. With this score, uh, with this uh, passes select, our next stage is to do embedding. That is, how can we feed the passes into a, a normal detection model? Because the passes of this, uh, the lens, lenses of this pass are not fixed. And the attributes of the nodes are often unstru unstructured data, for example, the file names of a, of a node. So borrow the, uh, the idea from other domains in machine learning. We propose to projecting them into the vector space. Uh, and we view a, pa a curl path as a sentence. We can treat each node as a noun, and each age as a verb. Then the path will be become like a sentence. Uh, then we can use a uh, graph embedding, uh, we can use uh, sentence embedding or document embedding uh, approach, for example, the dog to vac to embed the path into, a, uh, into the embed uh, embedding space. For example, for this curl passes, the labels in the nodes and the age can be directly mapped to a sentence like this. And uh, this can be used in the embedding. And uh, using this approach in the vector space, similar passes, they will be closer in the embedding space, and diff uh, different passes uh, will be far away, so that they can be easily se separated in the embedding space. So the, the final thing is to do the anomaly detection. Uh, we use a novelty uh, detection model to determine uh, if a pass is malicious or not. We will train a model with only the benign passes, uh, using the, the embedding of the benign passes, so that it, it will be able to detect unknown or new attacks, at, at, uh, attacks. And because we want to know whether the process is, is uh, malicious or not, we use the threshold-based method. That is, if there are more than H pass vectors are predicted as malicious, we will uh, consider the graph as malicious. So using this work workflow, we, do a, a, we make a, a prototype and then do some evaluation. To prepare the data set, we run about 15,000 malware samples that we collected from various share and various, various sun. And for the BNAT data set, we deployed our approach into an enterprise uh, for three months. And we could identify 23 target programs, both in the BNAT data set and the malicious data, uh, data set, so that we could use the BNAT data set to train our model then using uh, the malicious data set for our evaluation. And this includes the popular applications, for example, like IE, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Word, and also pre system tools, for example, CMD and Certain Util. The first we want to evaluate how effective is the probe de detector in detecting stealth malware. So for the uh, 23 target programs, for each of them, we choose 250 benign processes and 50 malicious uh, processes. And uh, 200 of them are used for training the, uh, training the anomaly detection model. And the rest 50 benign and malicious are used for evaluation. 
And uh, for each process, we select the top 20 rarest passes from a prone graph. And here are the detection results. On average, uh, using a threshold of three or four, that is, if we only use the top three or four uh, rarest passes, we could already achieve very high record and uh, very high precision. The next, we want to understand why the whole graph is not an effective feature. We compare with a graph embedding approach, which, which is we, embedding, we embed a prone graph into a vector space using the graph to vec approach. And the results are like this. Even though the graph to vec have reasonable preci precision, but it, it performs very bad in recall. So this comes from our assumption that the whole graph is not an effective feature in detecting de de stealthy malware. To empirically understand why uh, the graph uh, is not effective, we do a study. We use uh, Microsoft Word as an example. We first randomly chose 20 passes from uh, the benign graph and the malicious graph. And we can see that in the embedding space, uh, the, those passes are kind of mi mixed together. And there is only a small part which is highlighted in the black circle. Uh, that it can be easily separated. However, using our approach, which we select the 20, uh, top 20 rarest passes, and in the embedding space, we can see that those passes can be easily separated so that our approach are more effective than the whole graph uh, approach. So as a summary, OS level data provenance is a more general approach to capture the malicious uh, behavior of stealthy malware. And we pro propose a realness-based path selection algorithm to identify the pot potentially malicious parts in a data provenance graph as a feature for detection. We present a pro detector, uh, a provenance-based approach to automatically detect stealth malware, and we demonstrate its effectiveness through a systematic evaluation in an enterprise environment. Thank you. I'm happy to take any question. Uh, very nice talk, uh, so I like it very much. Uh, so, Inji from Johns Hopkins. So, I have a question regarding the realness that you mentioned uh, in detecting the benign and the malicious uh, paths. Mm -hmm. So, some benign passes might also be rare. For example, like uh, I want to install Google Chrome, a new computer I downloaded from IE, and then it's only happened once. Mm -hmm. So, how would you like differentiate those like rare but also benign passes from those real and malicious passes? Yeah, th th uh, yeah, that's a Good question. Uh, good question. So, uh, so f f even though there are some benign but rare uh, behavior, but if you, if you are, uh, if this approach is de deployed in a whole enterprise, so even that is rare to one person, but they are still common to several persons. So, so that they are, uh, the their uh, rareness is still lower than some attack behavior. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question is like, what happens if the program is updated, and also if the graph trained for one program that is using one computer, can you directly use for the same program but using a different computer? Okay, uh, yeah, that's also a very good question. So, uh, if the program is getting updated, uh, that is, we will choose that as a, another program. So. Uh, we will need to do a retraining of that. Uh, for your second question, uh, so uh, for each version of the program, uh, even though they are on different hosts, we will using the signature of this program to identify uh, uh, its uniqueness, so that uh, the same version of the program uh, on different versions, they, they, they will be considered as the same program, and uh, we will change a model uh, for that. <laughs> 